Hi folks, this is Justin with Mock Speed Hobbies. Uh, today we've got the F-18 Hornet, the uh, brand new 80 millimeter EDF that just came out from E-Flight, distributed by Horizon. Today I'm gonna be going over this thing. We're gonna unbox it and look at it and uh, possibly put it together today. Um, we're gonna zoom in on this so you can see. Uh, we have the bind and fly version. We've got a brushless motor with a 12 blade fan, an 80 millimeter. Comes with a 100 amp ESC. It's got 10 Metal Gear servos. It's got the AS3X uh, with safe receiver. Um, transmitter required at 67 uh, channels. I'm going to be using my IX12 on this. Uh, the battery required is going to be a 6S 22.2 volt, a 4000 to 7000. We're going to be using a um, SMC 6200 milliamp and a charger that is 6S capable is also required. So all you need is a radio, battery, and battery charger, and this thing is ready to go. Lots of great features on this airplane. Um, you'll notice that on this airplane you have a amazing landing gear system. It's just completely scale. It articulates. You'll notice it does have the, the simulated hydraulic struts front and rear. It does compress back when it lands. Um, they are fully retractable. The other thing is it's got a full flying stab. Uh, a lot of their previous jets have just had elevators. So you kind of lose a little bit of the realism there. But on this one, you do have a full flying stab, full complement of missiles and bombs. So the thing just looks absolutely great. We love the, um, I personally love the uh, paint scheme. Uh, it's a really cool squadron. I uh, love the tail art. Okay, folks, so let's get into the box here. Pull tab there. Flap right there. Start drawing it out easily. All the E-Flight stuff is always, it's always really well packed. Some of it is so tight in that box, so it's hard to get out, but that one came right out, no problem. Um, Okay, so true to form, everything's in there real nice. Um, they've got these formed foam packaging where everything's locked in there really good. You just go in there and cut the tape. Cut around the uh, little angles there. see a seam all right From here I'm gonna start with that end looks like that is probably what's holding in the uh, the wings lift right out just toss that back here imagine wings will just slide right out just spread that just a little bit to get them to come out get the knife out of the way another little bit of foam Retainer, little divider there. Manual's in a nice little slot here on the side. Vertical stabilizers, they've got good foam padding in between. They're sitting in the slot on the side. They're come, they came out in good shape. That out. 
here's your nose cone and they've actually stuffed uh, a little bit of hardware you need into that little hardware bag into the nose cone and here are your flying stabilizers this is one thing that i uh, mentioned earlier i really admire them for doing a full flying stab doing it the right way the way a jet really does work in real life get your wing joiner carbon fiber tube you'll see your missiles are already done um, some of their models in the past I've noticed that you've had to do some gluing um, these are already done so that's really cool um, they're just all molded one piece. The fins are already attached. Everything's pre-painted for you. I'm going to set these over here. Out of the way, that'll be one of the last things I do. Here's your drop tanks. They're ready. They're ready to go as well. There's another drop tank here. I already have the decals applied. And there's some foam padding here and then your other missile group right underneath uh, it's a little annoying to get out but there they go just be careful with it okay i guess they made the american flag optional to me that's not optional that's going on the plane There may be a reason for that. There may be some some part of the airplane that has to be put together before you can apply that decal. I would think that would make sense. We're hoping that's the truth. Okay, so you got a total of three drop tanks, center drop tank, and then two on each wing. Now, let's see if we can figure out how to get the plane out. I'm gonna say, that since the front end is captured, let's raise the rear carefully don't damage the your exhaust tips there's already some missiles on the bottom that are pre-attached to the plane landing gear is in the retracted position this airplane's got some beef to it it, it really does have some uh, some weight We like the uh, just all the scale features of the plane. It's really neat. Um, now it looks like on the uh, servo here, you're gonna have a more or less a looks like a direct drive system to where it's directly driving that with no push rod. Um, I've noticed it's got a special arm with a pin there. Be willing to bet that pin is gonna interface with the uh, the control horn directly. You've got a um, nice canopy latch system. I actually like that better than the uh, magnets. You don't have to yank on the uh, on the uh, canopy to get it off. You just pull back and it, it comes right out without any effort. Uh, so that's good. The canopy is already pre-built for you. You'll see the, uh, well, the ESC is way back in the plane, but you see they have an extension. Um, with the EC5 plug all the way up here to the front. You see your uh, steering servo and your retract servo there for the nose gear. It's a really cool scale uh, retractable system. It's got the scale doors just like it would on the real thing. Really cool plane. And it's highly prefabricated, so this really shouldn't take very long. Um, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way and I'll be right back. Okay, so emptied the bag out. Of course, you got your bind plug, uh, your hardware bag. You've got a few things you'll need. You'll need, and I've got one of the little multi-tool wrench. You'll need a, an Allen wrench to fit these screws. And then you'll need your uh, Phillips head for these black ones here. Uh, so we don't need that bigger one there. Well, let's get straight into the manual. 
Uh, we've got a table of contents here. We're going to skip right ahead to the um, assembly part. So uh, the first thing that they have you do is they have you start setting up the horizontal tail as, um, assembly here. So it's instructing you to use these black Phillips heads with these collars here. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the, we got the Phillips head in there. We'll go and we'll grab one of the horizontal stabs here, okay? Verify the direction. That's the wrong side. We'll need this one. Okay, so in order to do the assembly, we're going to need to flip the vehicle over. Make sure you do have an antenna on the top. So find a if you're building it on the box, I like building them on the box because you do have a little bit of protection from the styrofoam. You don't have protection from me dropping stuff on the floor. Okay, so it says to first take two of the black screws and we're going to mount this uh, control horn assembly to the stab. And they are showing, if you look in the picture, they're showing this little part right there facing towards the plane or towards the uh, the root, if you want to call it that, of the stab. You can go ahead and do this for both of them. If you want to just pre-do this, go ahead and get this out of the way. Make sure that is good and tight. Good and tight. said good and tight you don't want to over tighten it to the point where it is stripping things out but you do want to make sure you're good and tight there so they're not pulling out in flight So secondly, it says that we need to uh, insert this wheel collar into this slot right here. Well, I'm calling it a wheel collar. It's not actually a collar. It is a, a, a centering collar, I guess is what I should call it. Um, <clears throat> and how this is going to work is it's going to thread into this piece right here. Now, despite what the instructions may or may not say, I am going to Loctite this. I just think whenever I see something metal on metal, I just really can't, I can't trust it. Um, unless it's got a little bit of blue Loctite. Do not put red or green Loctite on this. It's just, it's too much. The, uh, the blue is a good, is gonna lock it, uh, but it is not quote unquote permanent. The, uh, the red is permanent, the green is still semi-permanent and can be next to impossible to get out. Now this is probably gonna be the tricky part, is getting that wheel that little centering color up on there. Just 
I'm gonna have to possibly, I think the best way to approach this is gonna have to take another little wrench, kind of lift it as you push this piece on there and then you can kind of use it to center it up. Hope everybody can see that. I'm wearing the head cam, so it's a little difficult. And then line the hole up. And install the retaining screw. Okay, great. So we've got it and everything's working. Like I said, you've got the servo here. Um, it is direct driving with that metal gear, gear servo. There's no linkage. That's probably the, honestly one of the easiest installs. There's no push rods. Um, I couldn't imagine it being any easier than that. The color was a bit tricky, but all in all, not too bad. I think anybody could handle that with a little bit of patience. We'll do it again on this side here. I'm gonna get it right there. If you guys can see that, get it right even with the edge. Do your best to drop that wheel color in there with the hole facing up. Didn't do quite a good job, but like I said, with a little small wrench or an Allen wrench or something, screwdriver, you can get your hand on it. You can get your little tool on it, work it on there, and just line her up. Pretty easy. That's really, really not too bad at all. But you can kind of use a, if you find a tool that's kind of similar to the size of that hole, uh, you can use it to kind of wiggle in there and get it right. Be sure not to mess your threads up, but uh, if you're gentle with it, you should have no problem. I'm gonna put a little bit of thread locker on here. And just be careful, drop that screw in there. All right, so cool, that's done. All right, we're gonna keep that little thread locker bottle handy just in case. I don't think we're gonna need it for anything else, but just in case. All right. So we've completed the horizontal uh, tail assembly. We're gonna move on to the uh, vertical stabilizer installation. It says connect the rudder servo right here where it comes out of the tail tuck the lead back in then we're going to secure the vertical tail with the two three millimeter by 16 millimeter countersunk machine suits so looks like everything's going to go to those from now on because we've used up all the other phillips head screws we'll grab the tails at this point we can flip the airplane over be careful And then right here, you'll see there is your uh, your rudder servo lead that comes out of the plane. There isn't going to be a left and a right. And you'll notice if you look at it, you've got a, the tails cant out. Um, they've oriented it to where the servos kind of hide. They put them on the inside so they're not as noticeable. So let's make sure we're hooking this up correctly. All right, you check your wires for the color. Look like orange to orange there. And then they say to obviously tuck this little connector down in there. The hole 
you know, I would say normally on an airplane, I would put a clip or something in there to retain that, but the hole is so small that it and sell it just by itself would hold it and keep it from spreading and ever having any danger of coming apart. So I honestly think that you're fine right there. Now you just want to press down into that. Get your bevel headed screw and insert right there. Let's see, why is it? See my holes are lining up. This might need to go down in just a hair more. There we go. Those don't have to go in very deep. Make sure they're fairly tight. This one, it gets sunk down in there quite a bit but you'll feel it grab. Make sure it's tight as well. And hopefully everybody can see that there. Turn it around, do the other side. Same as the other side. Verify that you're plugging it in correctly. Brown to brown, orange to orange. We're gonna push the connector down in there, into that slot. Tail fin, wiggle that till that goes all the way down. And on these EPO foam planes, you obviously, um, the EPO is more resilient than polystyrene, I will say that, but you, you do wanna make sure that you don't overstress the foam. Uh, if you squeeze it too tightly, you can wrinkle it. Uh, the surface of the paint can wrinkle. So when you're pushing stuff in and wiggling stuff around, be careful with it. All right, that one went in there pretty easy. Let's hope this one does the same. Yeah, that one, that one's a little easier than the other side, thankfully. All right, so it's starting to look like an airplane now. We got horizontal and your vertical fins in. Let's see what it tells us to do next. Okay, so it's gonna have us we're gonna jump up here to the uh, wing and that's what our remaining four screws will be for. You wanna get your uh, carbon fiber rod. You're gonna push it through the middle. Grab your wing. Another cool thing is this thing does have lighting. Uh, you'll notice it's got LED lightings in the wing tip. Really cool. Thing does have flaps, it's got ailerons. Got everything the real one's got. So we like to see. Now, this is a little bit different. They used to have just these would plug right in. You will have to pull them out nowadays. We got a flap servos and aileron. We'll make sure that it's got a label here where it says aileron and flap, and it also tells you negative positive and signal line now your negative is always going to be the darker line so we're talking about brown we'll plug the flaps up first make sure it clicks in and the ailerons click that in not a huge fan of that but um, I know with some of the airplanes and some of the uh, ducted fans have had issues with um, 
the plugs, the plug-in style. Um, we're having some issues coming loose in flight. So this airplane is, is it's a big plane, but it's probably small enough to fit in trailers in the back of some vehicles, um, fully assembled. So technically you could probably get by with that. But this is the biggest pain in the butt right here. It's getting those wires back in that little hole. That's gonna be the biggest bear of this whole operation. I can tell already. I don't want to damage it, but I'll tell you what, I can tell already this is gonna be a vehicle that once I get it together, it's freaking staying together. So just take your time. Work, those in, work the wires back in that. There we go. You know, I am only, I would only resort to taking this apart at just desperate measures only, I would say. If I just absolutely had to. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm gonna do my best not to pull those out as far. I'll tell you what I'm gonna suggest for, for you guys too is before you go to pushing the other wing in, just so you don't force the other wing off and pull your wires out that you worked so hard to get in. You may want to bolt one down first. Move it in a little bit, then wiggle the wires in there a little bit. And move it a little bit. All right. So we've got it in there now. Let's be careful again. I have to flip it over. Airplane's got a lot of scale detail to it, so there's plenty of things to mess up. You, you definitely want to watch what you're doing when you flip this thing around. There's antennas bristling out of it, there's vertical fins. All right, so while I'm on this side, Go ahead and grab these two screws and uh, bolt the wing down. There's one here in the front. It goes into a brass bond nut on that little tab. Make sure that's tight. And then there's one towards the rear. Not in the best spot. Um, it's right here up against the the uh, AMRAM missile, so that's actually kind of giving me a little trouble getting that screw in there right. Their threads just started. Okay, that's tight. One thing I'm noticing when I'm at the bottom here, um, you do have, I mean, you've, you've got a scale intake assembly right here, which is nice. So, you know, back in the day, you guys, you know, a lot of the kit manufacturers would over-exaggerate this. 
because of the amount of air that uh, EDF needs to ingest to get the proper thrust. But they're able to keep these scale and you've got right here what they commonly known as a cheater hole. Um, it's got a vent system to where it can suck air directly in from this area too to where combined with these two intakes and that you get enough air that's able to move through the ducted fan system. Uh, you can also notice that they're right above the, uh, there's a wood plate in there and you can see that there's a, uh, your 100 amp speed control is exposed to airflow directly in the duct as well so you get good cooling. The other cool thing is, is I've seen a lot of these um, styrofoam planes that have no access whatsoever to this area uh, where the EDF is. But with this one, you do have a two screws and a cover and plate that comes off to where you can get in there, access it, service it, whatever you need to do, replace parts. So that's really cool. The other side bolted down. Had to lean on that wing just a little bit to get it to go in. And then that screw dropped right in there. Okay, so what do the instructions say after this? Okay, next on the list. Bombs. These things just clip in. Um, this makes it extremely easy on you. Uh, they've all got tabs on them. So from the looks of it, this looks to be the middle tank. It just goes right here. You'll see the little tabs and the slot. Push it in and then push back. You're done. Um, obviously you can choose to run them with or without this. Um, <clears throat> obviously the scale detail with them is really cool. Uh, if you wanted to cut down on some of your, you know, obvious drag that this is going to put on the plane. Um, it's actually not a ton of weight, but you have to believe that's a little bit of drag. But undeniably cool. Um, the realism that this... Um, that this puts on the plane is, is pretty, pretty doggone cool. <clears throat> so you can see this is super easy I mean this is not as effortless and they come off just as effortless you just slide them forward and pull them out um, there's really no danger of them coming off because it's a fairly firm fit and um, wind pressure is always going to be pushing back and that's the direction that locks them in so all right now finally i know this without the instruction is we do have a uh, a nose cone here the uh which i just pushed in the floor the nose cone has got a uh, rare earth magnet and a rare earth magnet there on that tip um so it's it's literally just magnetic you just you slide it up over there it's nice and tight but the magnet keeps it from coming off at that point your um your initial construction of the plane is done be easy with that bomb okay so <clears throat> Next coming up is going to be the battery. Um, so we're going to select the battery here. What I want to use, 
I was talking about before is we want to use one of these SMC batteries. It's a 6,500 milliamp battery. It's a 6S. This is their true spec DV. It's good for more than 120 amps. It's a 75C battery. Um, so I think it really pour the amps and voltage to something. It is a big pack. I mean, you would think that, wow, this is a huge pack for, for such a uh, airplane, but these airplanes, they need mega voltage. And the better the pack, the better it'll run as far as your C rating. So this is a 75 C battery. That'll give you all the amperage that you need. It won't depress a lot under load, so you'll get the maximum performance that this uh, EDF can put out. Okay, so you want to remove the uh, the strip from it. Now, I don't believe this thing is going to fit in here sideways. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little test fit here first. A little bit of dry fitting just to make sure that everything's kosher. I believe a vertical mount on this battery is going to be the best way to put it in there. I'm going to double check that and make sure that I can get that battery in there, get it plugged up, and get the canopy on. So obviously you got to get the canopy on so let's see we are not clearing so we may have to figure out a way to get that battery down a little lower so that may be partly my fault let's make sure all these are out of the way this is about the only thing i hate Velcro straps sometimes. It can be super annoying. But I think, I think we may have a problem with clearance. Pretty sure we do. Yes. We may still be able to get it in there the other way. Let's try. It's tight. Could possibly have to step down to a smaller battery. Let's see if the uh, instructions have any insight on this. So the CG from the front of the root of the wing is 70 to 78 millimeters back. That's something I need to consider when I put the battery in as well. Okay, folks, I'm going to do some rethinking on the battery. I'm going to pause the video. We will get back to you shortly. Okay, so we've got a transmitter setup table. Um, so we're going to just directly copy that. So we're going to go into my IX12 and we're going to add a new model. Um, we're going to do a default setting for airplane. Create a new Acro model. Go to the bottom here. Let's see if they've got anything in the gallery here. It may have a F-18. It may not be the same one, but possibly. Well, they haven't updated it just yet, so oh, let's pick a random jet just so we know we're doing a jet, and then we'll rename that.
F. F eighteen. All right. Okay. So let's let's do the first thing. Let's bind it. I'm not going to bind this one in safe mode. I'm, <clears throat> I'm really past safe mode at this point, so uh, we're gonna go without it. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our bind plug. We've got a little extension here for the bind plug to make it easier to get to. So it's really easy to insert. Binding without safe mode, turn it on. You'll notice you're getting the flash with the bind plug in there. Like the lights, by the way. <clears throat> now you do need to walk away from the vehicle. You need to get about 20 to 30 feet away. Um, we have had issues before where they don't want to bind if you're standing right next to Binding. it. So. Okay, so she's talking to me, telling me that we have a complete bind. And everything just came on. So we are bound. Now we're going to go into the transmitter setup table and we're going to set it up just exactly the way they... Uh, they ask us to here. Now the way you would bind without safe mode, unplug it, then pull your bind plug out. To do with safe mode, what you're gonna do is <clears throat> immediately after you plug the battery in and you get the flashing light, then you pull the bind plug out, then you bind the transmitter. Um, to bind without safe mode, you're just gonna leave the bind plug in there until you disconnect the power, then pull it out. <clears throat> Guys, don't forget to pull out your bind plug when you're done either way. So we're going to go down here. Now this is the list right here, our IX-12 is the bottom. So we're going to be setting this setup table up. We're going to go on the system setup. to aircraft type. Okay, we're gonna set it up. It's set up as wing with one aileron and one flap. So we're gonna find one aileron, one flap right there. Now the IH-12 gives you a um, graphic interface obviously, but um, still basically the same thing with your other radios. You're doing the same kind of uh, uh, aircraft type assignment. Now channel assignment is a little bit different. You're going to go into, you're going to back up, we'll go to channel assignment. And then we're going to double check this. It says gear should be number five and switch A, which it is, defaulting to that. And flap should be channel six, and switch D, which is this channel right here, D. So six says NA. So it's obviously either inhibited or something like this. So let's go to port assignment. Six, no, it is active. 
Okay, so it is assigned two flaps. We're good to go there. All right, now, as far as flap system uh, set up, we need to go into your uh, aircraft function list, which should be under model adjust. Go to flap system. You want to activate the switch, which is switch F, excuse me, switch G, D. And then it has the positions right here for you, 150 and 100, or negative 150 and 100. And they've got it recommended as a, a two second um, transit time. And they also has the uh, percentages for the elevator trim. So, okay, let's go ahead and do that. Your flap percentage zero for position one, position two, switch the switch into position two, which is position one on the chart. This will be 50%. So we can slide this over, we get it to 50%. Elevator needs to be 10%. Swatch it down to position two. This needs to be 100%. Elevator needs to be 15%. speed this is personal preference guys I mean if you want it to be longer it can be longer but two or three seconds is generally about what you're looking for we'll do two the way they say okay 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 Oh, pardon me, I did get this wrong. We're not 0%. We need to be at negative 100. There we go. And 0% on the elevator. Okay, so we got negative 150 and 100. Zero. 10% 10, 10 and 15% on the elevator. So that should be the end of our setup. As far as that goes, all right, cool. So we're back to the main menu. Let's plug her back up and I believe that should be up, up landing gear. So the AS3X just took over. Looks like our flaps are in the full down position. Everything seems to be working. Ailerons. Both working in the right direction. And it's not a tailor on setup on the elevator. Best I can tell. It is a flying stab, but just not tailor on. One thing I am noticing is that we've got quite a bit of difference there. Um, these are not lining up. So I'm gonna look into that. Next thing I wanna try is the landing gear. So I'm gonna pick this one up. I'm gonna move. 
that right there. And flip it over and then we're gonna try the landing gear switch. That is just too cool. It is actually a fully sequenced landing gear system. The uh, rear landing gear, and this is metal by the way. This is not plastic, it's all metal. Um, you've got a real strut. It works exactly like the full scale version does. They rotate as they come out, the doors open. Doors open on the front just like they would on the real thing. Um, you've even got suspension here on your front as well uh, it's just unbelievably cool let's watch them close that's crazy uh, the doors are sequenced just like the real thing so at this point we've got a, a complete ready to fly f-18 